Cool. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> All right. So basically the podcast, we're going to talk about how you kind of, each one of you guys kind of got into music and then how it's kind of relevant to now today. Um, so everybody but Kathy, you're the only one that's not from the Bay Area. Right. right. So you grew up in Chicago? Yes. And are you from the Bay Area, David? I wasn't born there. Oh, you weren't. Where were you born? I was born in Boston. <laughs> I went to high school in Cincinnati, kind of grew up in Cincinnati. And in 1959, I went to sometime in the, in my in my like teenage years uh -huh. or maybe a little before that, my parents took me to San Francisco and I saw it. Oh. And I experienced it, and I saw the fog coming in, and and I, something told me that I was going to live there. Really? And I knew I was, and I knew that from that moment on. And that so, I did everything to <laughs> screw my life up enough so that I, so that I would have to move there. So I did. In 1959. In so, 1959. So I've so I've been there since 1959. So, I've wow. been there longer, much longer than I've been anywhere else. Obviously. Uh, okay. <laughs> Uh, so how did you initially get into music then? Were you already way into it when you moved to San Francisco? I was always into music. Since I was four, I took violin lessons. And, oh, wow. <laughs> and then when I stopped playing violin and viola in high school, I started singing in choruses and whatever, acting yeah. and singing in musicals. And, and, and What musicals did you act in? Oh, I don't know. Oliver, maybe? <laughs> cats? No. Cats, probably cats. Lion King. <laughs> plays, in, plays anyway. Oh, West Side Story. That was fun. Hamilton? <laughs> and then, and then yeah. I, after I got to San Francisco, I bought a guitar. Oh, awesome. And because um, I wanted to be a, a folk singer like Pete Seeger. <laughs> and, um, and it went from there. Okay. Chris, how did you get into music? Um, well, I'm actually not from the Bay Area either. I You're not? On the East Coast. I'm from Connecticut. But you're Are you Yankee. all living in the Bay Area uh, now? I I'm so now. confused. I, uh, <laughs> I, I grew up in Connecticut. I raised my children in Los Angeles, and then I married into the Bay Area ah, three years ago. Okay. Oh, yes. So how did By you... marriage, I am a Bay Area mm. person. Okay. Yeah. And then how did you originally get into music? Um... I, same as David, I loved it from when I was, I think I started taking piano lessons at six. Okay. My parents always encouraged it. And, uh, yeah. It's nice. A, it's a fun ride. Okay. <laughs> yeah, very cool. And Kathy, you're from Chicago. Yeah, outside Chicago. And how did you get start playing music? Uh, music? My mom was a singer and uh, played piano, and we had instruments around the house, guitars and ukuleles and piano, and mm -hmm. um, just... From a very young age, people, every time I would sing, people would go, whoa, what, what was that, you know? Uh -huh. I remember the very first time we were driving <laughs> in the car, singing uh, singing yeah. in a round with the whole family, like, yeah. you know, campfire songs and... Row, 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 and, Yeah, the, and, I, and I, <laughs> it was uh, down by the river called the Hanky Panky, and I just oh, yeah. started, down by the river! I said, down by the river! And they're like, what? who is this kid? And she's like <laughs> four years old, so... Uh, yeah, that's when I started singing. <laughs> when did you realize that you were much better at singing than just the average, like... During the hanky-panky Sing along. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah sing along. <laughs> so when you were four. That was, that was the three, first yeah. moment. I was uh, a kid. I sang in the church variety show. And I sang this Barbara Streisand song, Sammy Made the Pants Too Long, and I had a whole costume I'd conceived, and it was the pants were too long, and I had <laughs> suspenders. And mm -hmm. I sang the song, and I belted it out, and everyone jumped out of their seats and it scared me and um, I, I get backstage with my mom and she's all excited they gave you a standing ovation and I was oh. like is that good <laughs> were they getting I was to terrified leave? yeah I was absolutely terrified <laughs> so she now that's the litmus yeah. yeah now that's the litmus if they don't stand up I failed <laughs> and Donnie how'd you get in are you from the Bay Area am I getting this all yes. up? I okay yeah. Yeah. I got one right uh, actually yeah, I was born in Portland Oregon okay um, Navy Brown so my father was kind of moving around, and uh, I think when I was about three years old, I moved to the Bay Area. Okay. Peninsula, Palo Alto, and uh, did the Bay Area for a long time. I moved back up to Oregon, up to Washington State, but mostly grew up in the Bay. Mm -hmm. Got into music by just having music in the house. Okay. My mother also was a singer. Oh, wow. Um, 
pretty much, you know, all the USO clubs and stuff like that, being my father was in the Navy. And uh -huh. They met, she was like 16, he was 19 or something. That's a whole nother book, but uh, <laughs> um, just moving around a lot, but mostly staying in California. As I got older, I, I if they were, if he was going to get transferred or whatever, I'd stay. I had an older brother that I used to live with. Oh, wow. So I could actually not move around and go to so many different schools, which was kind of a drag. But So you could stay in one spot and yeah, kind of... Yeah, stay in one spot. Yeah. And uh, just remember my mother singing and, and had a, an old hi-fi stereo set that they always had a lot of kind of like... Sarah Vaughn and Ella Fitzgerald and Henry Mancini and stuff that was probably really strange for a young kid to kind of connect with, but yeah. I, I kind of liked it. Okay. And started listening to a lot of soul music and rhythm and blues and, and of course, classic rock. Uh, it all kind of touches you like it did me in, in a, a weird kind of special way. And so I think going into high school, probably 16, um, my father was stationed out at Treasure Island. Outside oh, Texas. okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And the Chief's Officers Club would have these things on Friday and Saturday nights when the guys would come in from being out on these huge ships for months at a time. And they needed a band to play. So my father, with all his little Navy connections, put us in the Officers Club Friday nights, moved us over to Hunter's Point, in, in the East Bay uh -huh. on Saturday nights and then down in Palo Alto at Moffett Field on Sunday nights. So it, we thought it was the, the, the most amazing thing. It was a little scary because these guys drank so much. And would, <laughs> these were the days when they had the, the glass pitchers. Oh, oh my. my. Plastic pitchers. <laughs> these guys would get lit up and try to kill each other. We were up there going, doing these steps and stuff. But mostly just being turned on to music, I think, in the house and, and and starting to look at it in a different light as I got older. I was totally into sports when I was a kid. Oh, okay. So, uh, you know, we had the garage band, and, and uh, my mother paid us like $55 every Wednesday to do the uh, the Navy gigs, and, and uh, it kind of That's cool, there. yeah. Um, as I got out of high school, I think I was out of high school maybe a year and a half, and, and got the Elvin Bishop gig uh, out of San Francisco, and did that for 10 years, and wow. boom, 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 and here I am. Yeah. So, that's a, yeah. that, that's really cool, and Jude, how did you how did you then pick up guitar? Oh, guitar! You know, that's my father used to come to my kindergarten class. Maybe it was first grade, and he'd play really deep songs on the acoustic guitar. Like, oh, so your Why father played. Can a dish break a hammer? <laughs> <laughs> I was like, I loved it, and so I started playing guitar a few years later. Why can a dish break a hammer? Yeah. <laughs> Oh, why, oh, why, oh, why? Because, because, because. Man. That would be something that would be fun. <laughs> <laughs> I play, like, Bob Dylan stuff, too. But, um, you know, I started playing acoustic. But then I just remembered this movie that changed my life. It was called American Pop. It was a cartoon movie. Mm. Mm -hmm. And there were two moments that really stood out. Uh -huh. Jimi Hendrix playing Purple Haze. Like, that second chord, the G chord. Purple Haze. Oh, G, 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 G. It was so, so powerful. I couldn't believe it. <laughs> But also, Grace Slick and Jefferson Airplane were on that singing Somebody to Love, and that was like the oh, most vivid that. moment from that movie. Yeah. That really stuck yeah. With me. So I started playing electric guitar and just, you know, all through high school. I, you know, mm -hmm. guitar is the ultimate noisemaker. Friends of mine that grew, that knew me when they were adults, family friends said I used to run down the hall banging pots really loudly. <laughs> that was their chief memory of me. So I think <laughs> if you're that kind of person, the electric guitar is the ultimate, you know, weapon of sound. Sure. Yeah. So, that and the drums. Yeah. <laughs> I, think, yeah. I used to get kicked out of my class and in school for beating on the desk. <laughs> you know, uh, numerous times. Uh, I had no idea why. Did you play Wipeout? I was playing Wipeout, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I swear to God, I yeah. was. Yeah, too. That's one of the first ones I played yeah. on my desk. Those, those desks you had in those days. With the little <laughs> yeah, you could lift up and hide. Lift up top. It had a nice little hollow sound to yeah. it. <laughs> 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 Honey! <laughs> Principal! <Yeah. laughs> you got air guitar and desk drums. Desk yeah. drums, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Whole band. <laughs> so, David, when you moved, you moved to San Francisco. Yeah. And how did you start meeting up with people, start playing? Just started going down to, uh, I would guess, down to North Beach and playing folk songs, and or going to hoot nannies. They used to call them, you know, open mics. We call them now, but uh -huh. and just 
because I saw what, what people were singing there and I said, whoa, I could, I could beat that one. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so, better than these guys. <laughs> and I don't even know how to play guitar. So. <laughs> and so I just started doing that and, and all of a sudden I met, I met this girl who was kind of started singing duets together uh -huh. and, and making up little funny stories and shtick and became a, 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 a folk music professional, whatever that yeah. is. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, mm -hmm. started playing around and, and it ended up being getting enough so that we had an agent in Los Angeles and went to to New York trying to get a record deal. But it was kind of the you know, this was like nineteen sixty three. The Beatles had just come out and Okay. You figured there wasn't much long for the Kingston Trio to go against the Beatles. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah. <You know? laughs> and uh and so we came back, and Paul and I and I I quit that because uh, actually she stopped smoking pot. Really? Yeah. <laughs> when, she, when she started, when they she married this bass player, actually he was a disc jockey who mm. started playing bass, <laughs> and so he so he had to be in the act. <laughs> oh, so he had to join the band. Yeah, yeah. And, and, <laughs> just, and when she stopped smoking pot, we didn't have any... Uh, the sense of humor has just completely changed. <laughs> didn't, have anything in <laughs> yeah. didn't have anything in common yeah. anymore. <laughs> and so I, I just kind of had to leave because nothing was happening. <laughs> oh, that's amazing. <laughs> and I had met Paul Kantner in um, San he's Jose. Yeah, he's yeah, well, that's, that's, that was the attraction. <laughs> 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 we both did. And we both played guitar and, b and picked banjos and did stuff like that. And so I went back there and we decided we were going to become a folk act together but okay between the uh smoking pot and other things yeah it never seemed to happen <laughs> <laughs> and besides the fact that it was it was it was past time to become a folk singer you know yeah and so we were in, in venice and let's see david crosby was down there he had been playing in a folk group called les baxter's balladeers okay which was interesting <laughs> And um, he used to come over. We actually, probably stayed with. We had a house in Venice. Venice in L.A. Yeah. In oh, LA. Okay. Mm -hmm. We had moved down there from San Jose because that would. Better, we went to L.A. to be, become big in the folk music scene. And, okay, so you moved. Which from, never happened. You moved from San Francisco to L.A. and that was when you're trying to get sign you know, and stuff. Or? Yeah, and no, well, <laughs> never even got that far. <laughs> right. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and eventually we moved back to San Jose because it wasn't happening, and and then we went and saw it's hard. Hard Day's Night, and then it was all over. Well, that looks like what to do. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> That's, uh, as Kathy often says, let's take LSD and plug into Fender amplifiers, and <laughs> <laughs> there you go. <laughs> That's amazing. <laughs> you, you were like the first to join um, Jefferson Airplane. Through a couple of pot bus, I ended up being in jail when Jefferson Airplane started, so. Oh, <laughs> whoops. <laughs> Marijuana is such a formative herb in your life. Yes, yeah, yeah, it, yeah, it, it all comes it back to, to that. To light one up right here, and it's, it's totally legal. Yeah, yeah and, and, and now totally I don't do wrong. it anymore. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> right when it What a legal. rebel. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, Timing is everything. <laughs> and, so, and actually, I was actually in jail when Paul came to visit me. Really? And, and said, what did he bring you? <laughs> actually, I was in the, in a kind of, I think it was like almost Civil War era jail in Mar in San Rafael, California, in Marin County, uh -huh. and the jail was so ancient in the in the basement of the courthouse, <laughs> and and through the window there was a little crack, and Paul slipped me a joint. <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't Alcatraz, <laughs> was it? All right. I learned, I, I learned nothing. <laughs> and uh, and he told and he told me, hey, you know, I just met this this guy Marty Ballin. You know him? And I said, yeah, he plays pretty. He's a good singer. Uh -huh. And he said, well, we got a band, and I think we're going to call it Jefferson airplane and I said that seemed like a stroke of genius to me yeah. although yeah. I didn't know what it meant either so. <laughs> <laughs> and so when I and so we were I was we were all planning trying to form bands at that okay. point anyway so I, when I got out I was, was on the streets and and theoretic and I met the guys and we started Quicksilver Messenger Service okay you know we were Marty and, and uh, Paul helped us out, giving us a place to, to rehearse and stuff, because they, they got signed very quickly to record contract. Yeah. And so, and it's like that in the Bay Area at that time. All the bands were really close together. Yeah. And 
it, so I ended up in Quicksilver, and he was in Jefferson Airplane. But we were still all buddies and went to see each other's concerts and the Grateful Dead. And yeah, we we're all friends from back from when we used to be folk singers. Actually, wow, so. that's that's really cool. And then and the Birds with Crosby. Yeah, so, so you you had Quicksilver, Messenger, and then did you join Jefferson? Airplane or Jefferson Starship then? Uh, Jefferson when, Airplane, right? Well, in, in 1971, I think Marty left Jefferson Airplane. Okay. And uh, then I was, I, and I had, I had already quit Quicksilver because I wasn't doing anything at that point. Oh, Somehow okay. it stopped being creative for me. And, and so I kind of had to leave because it, it was kind of a, it wasn't Yeah, happening. it wasn't happening anymore. <laughs> right, 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 right. And, um, and I brought Paul and Grace in to sing on this record I was working on. Mickey Hart from The Grateful Dead was making a solo album. And there was this one song that cried out for a couple of harmony singers. So I asked Paul and Grace if they wanted to come over. And, and we all did the vocals on that. And it was beautiful. And actually, Grace played piano on it. Wow. And, uh, and then when it came time to tour... They said, "Well, we're missing a we're missing a voice. Would you like to?" <laughs> Paul said, "Do you want to come on and, pl- and be in Jefferson Airplane?" And I said, "Duh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, of course." <laughs> but of course, <laughs> and so it went on from there. Wow. Was that Blind John? That was Blind John. Yeah. Yeah, that's cool. And Donnie, you were the you joined the band next, right? As far as chronologically well, here, or kind of. I mean, yeah. As far as this band's concerned. Yeah, yeah. I'm talking about the, yeah, just it, as far as this band's because you joined I got the, in early oh, 80s. Early 80s. And how did you meet up with um, David? Well, I knew Mickey. Mickey uh, and I were, we actually hired, when I got the Elf and Bishop gig in the early 70s, um, I was doing a thing called uh, Gideon and Power uh-huh. out of San Francisco, kind of a gospel R&B kind of weird Give me your flowers now while you live. Ain't no good when you're dead and gone. <laughs> <laughs> um, we were using Mickey as a background singer, and uh, I got the Elvin gig, and we started making records, and we needed some singers. Kind of the same thing David was talking about. We hired him as, a, as an extra voice. Wow. He became the lead singer of Elvin, and then he got a, a Mickey got offered the uh, Jefferson Starship gig. Uh huh. And, uh, the early 80s he called me up and said uh, we need a drummer come down and, and we're doing some auditions so I went down there basically when the auditions were pretty much over there was one guy in front of me at the studio old studio in, in San Francisco the Automat Rubinson I think yep and beautiful studio everybody used to hang as soon as and, Donnie uh, as soon as Donnie sat down and played we knew he was it oh really yeah it was so, obvious <laughs> yeah you know did the 80s with the band and, and uh, known each other for a while. Yeah, for quite a while. Wow. And it, and it, it moves and, and keeps going. And I, I love it. That's awesome. And then who, who joined in next after uh, Chris? In 1998, the lineup was different than this. It was uh, Paul Kantner, Marty Ballin, uh, uh, Jack Cassidy, Prairie Prince on drums, Diana Mangano on uh, vocals and Slick Aguilar on guitar. Uh huh. That's that's when I joined them, and it just it morphed into this lineup as we okay. went. And mm-hmm. this is a really sweet lineup. Yeah, it is. <laughs> My best friends. How did you um, then get involved with them? Um, T. Lavitz was playing with them then, and I was working for another uh, very important keyboard player that plays with. Fleetwood Mac, Brett Tuggle, wow. and he got the call, and he couldn't do it, and he was like, hey, little buddy, you want to go check this out? <laughs> it worked out. I made friends there, and it, it worked out. And were, were you in the Barrier at this time? I was in Los Angeles. In Los Angeles? Yeah. Okay. I think, Kathy, were you next Kathy in the band? Next. She was, and, and we found d- her on stage with, <laughs> with Big Brother. I discovered her. Yeah. <laughs> no, I did. Yeah. <laughs> Stole her. I'm the one that came back and said, you guys got to check this girl out. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I guess we all discovered oh, her. Oh, don't fight over me, guys. <laughs> but it was me. <laughs> to tell you the truth, she discovered us. Yeah. That's really? true. I was a huge, huge Jefferson Starship fan when I was a kid. and Obviously, Grace Slick, uh, one of my heroes, and... Uh, uh, Mickey Thomas too, and you know, and these guys, these two <laughs> knuckleheads, <laughs> and uh, I used to go see him in concert, and I bought all the albums. I had every album on vinyl, all the way from Jefferson Airplane up through Starship, 
Uh huh. And um, I was singing with Big Brother in the Holding Company, doing the Janice stuff, when I met them, and. Uh, I was just reminiscing about that. I'll never forget Paul Kantner coming to my apartment in San Francisco because I was living there at the time. Okay. And um, he was wearing this long, dark overcoat and a black beret, and he had a scarf, and he looked very fancy, and he came into my apartment, and we got a couple guitars out, and I had all the albums on the floor so that he could see what a big fan Band I was. was. Yeah. Good idea. And uh, we... <laughs> we Played, strummed a little bit and sang some harmonies, and he's like, "Okay, you know, this was just really a formality. You're in." <laughs> so, that was awesome. Oh wow! <laughs> so he showed up to your house to to yeah. like test you for the yeah. for the yeah. band. Yeah, and it was, and, he, and I feel I feel like he got kind of dressed up to do it because I never really saw him ever look that fancy again. <laughs> <laughs> they, you, they probably told him, "Hey, we need to yeah. get this girl in the band. You got to <laughs> shove looking good." Yeah. Nice trench coat, right? Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> so when did you move to San? Francisco? Francisco then? Uh, I guess it was 2006. Oh, okay. And um, I went there to do this show, Love Janice, that I had done previously in New York and uh, Chicago originally. How did you get hooked up with, the, with that? Well, I was singing around town in Chicago um, most of my adult life, doing my own music, doing my own band, mm -hmm. making records. Um, we had a very popular local band in Chicago, and I always used to do a couple of Janice covers, and also, I, you know, White Rabbit. And uh, so, when Love the show Love Janice came to town, Beth Hart was the singer. Oh wow! And she had just gotten signed to her record deal, and they um, she couldn't do it. And so they auditioned everybody in the theater world, and they mm. couldn't find anybody to do it. And they start oh. asking around, who in Chicago could do this? And uh, allegedly, everyone they asked <laughs> said Kathy Richardson. And uh, <laughs> so when they called me to go down, I, I, it was so strange. I got this phone call from a theater, the Royal George Theater. And they said, hey, we're producing this show, Love Janice. And I said, I've heard of it. I, I was actually going to go see it. I have the book. Oh, Love wow. Janice by Laura Joplin and mm -hmm. and they said, Well we really want you to come down and, and try out for it and I was like, No, 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 <laughs> not me. I don't sound like Janice. I don't <laughs> nobody sounds like Janice, you know. I, I I'm not an actor. And they said, Well we still we don't care. We don't really want an actor. We want a singer. So oh, come wow. on down. So I came I went down and I thought it was just gonna I thought immediately they would see that I was wrong and they would you know just let me go and they they're looking at me <laughs> and they're like, look like she kind of looks like Beth you know she kind I think she'll fit the costumes you know <laughs> <laughs> and, then, uh, and then I sang and they were like okay we really want you to do this and they offered it to me on the spot and I said no I'm really gonna have to think about it guy I don't know yeah, yeah. Uh, but I decided you know it was a pretty important opportunity that I probably shouldn't pass up and uh, so glad I did it. It took my life in a whole other trajectory. Yeah. Did you know that it was going to be touring or did you think you're only doing Chicago? Well, you know, everybody always says, you know, I, as I've learned in theater, you're always shooting for Broadway, you know, right. so yeah. we, were, we were definitely doing the show, they were doing the show in, you know, smaller markets to test it out, get reviews, work it out, mm. and then with the aim of going to Broadway um, and we did it we did end up going off Broadway but you know again I had no idea what when I said yes to it I had no idea what how my life was gonna change yeah yeah so that took you to San Francisco eventually yes yeah. and then that's how you joined yeah, up. and I had <laughs> just signed a lease on an apartment Mm. And five days later, the show closed. Mm. And they, I thought we were going to go. It, they, you know, they said, oh, it's going to run forever. Right. We just got to get, you know, and I thought, I'm going to be doing this play for like the next however many years. And, um, and then it closed, and I was like, oh, man, what am I going to do now? Yeah. And um, Big Brother asked me to sing with them on this Summer of Love tour with Jefferson Starship. Wow. And I was such a huge Jefferson Starship fan. I was I just more excited her. about like, <laughs> opening for Jefferson Starship. <laughs> right, exactly. You know? and, uh, and I met them, and here we are. Yeah. I remember that in New York. Yeah. I remember the moment. It, did. Yeah. it discovered you. You were in our dressing room. <laughs> <laughs> and you said, Kathy Richardson, what kind of name is that? <laughs> I, said, I don't know, Chris Smith. Yeah. <laughs> you tell me. There you go. <laughs> 
I said, no, that's Kathy fucking Richardson. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> and it has been ever since. <laughs> <laughs> when they asked you to join the band, like in a million years, would you have ever thought that? Oh you- God, no, never in a million years, beyond my wildest dreams. Like, I knew that, you know, it's one of those things where you see someone like Grace Slick when you're a kid, and you go, I want to do that. Yeah. I want to do that, but yeah. I didn't really know that I literally was going to do that. Yeah, <laughs> that is going to be you. Yeah, in a few you know, I wanted to be a, a rock star. Absolutely. Yeah. That was like, I'm. that's what I want to do yeah. and what I want to be. And uh, never intended to ever emulate someone else or portray someone else. Um, and I don't really, in, in, this, in this group, I don't really portray Grace. I sing Marty songs and Mickey songs and... Um, and obviously the Grace songs, and but you know, and I Paul, I play Paul's guitar, and you know, so it's it's not really like I'm just gonna put on a black wig and and try to be right. Grace. Right, Although right. there, she, to me, Grace and Janice are like the iconic female queens of rock, and there's mm-hmm. no way that I would be standing here obviously without grace i mean obviously in this band yeah but like it like even just being a a woman who plays rock i mean they were um you know they were groundbreaking yeah and and stunning in their time mm-hmm. you know so it there's no way to not borrow from that sure Wait, I joined this band seven years ago. You're not Grace. <laughs> <laughs> I have to, I have to like tell the audience sometimes. I'm like, in case you're still tripping on acid from the '60s, she looks I just want you to know, yeah, Grace, you look amazing. And I'm like, I fucking better. <laughs> you know, that's all I have to say about that. <laughs> that is the color of your hair. Yeah, your face and everything is totally different. <laughs> <laughs> Speaking of acid, how do you think acid or LSD affected uh, Jefferson Airplane? Uh, oh, uh, frequently. Music? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, do you think it made it better or worse? I don't know. Uh, yeah. That's for David. You. David. David. David was part of that. Uh, Grandpa. I would tell say us about the, the drug. <laughs> <laughs> I know. I, re- I I watched the video where Marty was saying that he was uh, throwing LSD out into the crowd at wow. the Fillmore, and uh, eating like candy, you know, yeah. party yeah. favors. <laughs> but uh, I imagine when he I was kept there, some of them. <laughs> <laughs> didn't you guys like like? Didn't somebody like dose the turkey from Thanksgiving, and you guys all went out and went to a show? <laughs> Did, I remember that. Is that right? what it was? <laughs> oh, I, uh, I don't know. I, 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 I think I. Well, I was still a folk singer. Like early, somebody had been in Cambridge where Timothy Leary was and yeah. brought back some LSD, and so yeah. I took it before while I was still with David Michaela. Yeah, so uh, it was it was long ago, but not <laughs> with airplane. You know? Oh, of course, of course. <laughs> Back uh, on in, stage, in those, I mean, in those they, days, you yeah. couldn't avoid it. If you went to the concert and, and yeah. drank anything, you never knew. Electric Kool Aid. Yeah, yeah, a little yeah. electric Kool Aid. The yeah. acid test went on forever. Right, yeah. right. <laughs> Did Timothy ever, as ever come of fact, to the show? As a matter of fact, there's a Quicksilver album called uh, Happy Trails that has a, uh, I think, a 27 minute version of Who Do You Love on it. <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> That's amazing. That was like... Uh, yeah, that that just sober. crystallizes it right there. <laughs> <laughs> and and that, that was taken from... There were there were portions of that were recorded at the Fillmore East and, uh-huh. and the Fillmore West. And the Fillmore West part is the weird middle part where uh-huh. everybody got dosed, including Roy the whole Rogers audience. Roy Rogers chiming in all. And, <laughs> and it, it, it yeah. got pretty out there. Wow. But Any Roy Rogers inserts in the song or... Happy trails <laughs> to you. <laughs> and or it's like, you know, that's when you that's move your hand and you're tripping, it's like... Yeah. Trails. Uh, trails. Uh, yeah. uh, <laughs> there were trails there. <laughs> but actually, that, that Quicksilver was breaking up while, at, right after that album got recorded. Right. Oh. Quicksilver was breaking up, and we did mm. one last, yeah. last session, mm. and the guy came in with the album cover, yeah. and... And he and he looked, you know, with some kind of. The, the artist came right. in, and said, "Hmm, looks like Happy Trails," because he could see that. And so then we thought that <laughs> would be a great. And so he said, "Why don't you make it, make the title of the album Happy Trails?" Because because the guitar player was yeah. quitting and leaving. Yeah. And so. Um, 
Anyway, so. Yeah. Did Timothy ever come to any of the shows? Weird. Timothy, yeah. Oh, sure. Yeah. Actually, he, there was this big, huge thing that the first huge, huge uh, thing called the, the Human Bee Inn. Have you heard of that? Yeah. That was in like, no. You never heard of that? No. no. I forget what hmm. year that was. It was 66 or something like hmm. that. You know, in Golden Gate Park. Yeah. And all, it, and Jefferson Airplane, Quicksilver, and The Grateful Dead, we were all in existence. Yeah. <laughs> playing at the Avalon and the Fillmore. And um, there was this thing called, and it happened in January of all oh times. My oh, my. And there was this thing at the Polo Fields in, in Golden Gate Park called yeah. The Human Being. Mm -hmm. And all those, three of those bands were going to play. And Timothy Leary was there, and Allen Ginsberg was mm -hmm. there. And wow. uh, who knows, poets and, and you know. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And... And it turned out that there were estimates anywhere from 20,000 to 60,000 people showed up. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> and that was the first time we realized that was so, there were so many of us. <laughs> <laughs> A lot of freaks. So that, was, that, was, that was the precursor of, you know, Monterey Pop and, and yeah. actually ultimately Woodstock. Sure. So, mm -hmm. Wow. Yeah, that, yeah. <laughs> Did they play all day and night? It, it played as long as it was daylight. Yeah. Well, as long as as long as the park permit, probably yeah. sunset, they cut it off. So. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Wow. I, I don't want to skip out on you, Jude. So when did you join in? You joined in with these guys. You Thank you. Uh, like 2012, you know? I mean, <laughs> the, 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 the story goes way back. <laughs> <laughs> Biblical times. <laughs> before the pyramids, Judah. there was a site called myspace.com. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, wow. That was, <laughs> that was ancient. Yeah, I met Kathy, and I became her lead guitarist in her solo. You know, she's got a, you know, she's a Grammy-winning solo artist. Yeah. yeah. Nominated, but it's... It's an honor. It's an honor to be nominated. We're gonna we're gonna get to that. Congratulations! I, I promise you. <laughs> and then you know I used to play with Donnie in the, the late '90s and JGB band. He used to be Jerry Garcia's drummer. And after that, after Jerry passed, it was called JGB. And the, him and three other original members. And I joined on guitar with Peter Harris and uh, hopped on a tour bus. But then, how old were you? Yeah, how 26, did you, 26, 27. How did you get that gig? Like you, you uh, it's one guitar. He's I was amazing. working with. The, I mean, obviously you have yeah. to be a killer you know, guitar so player, but really good. <laughs> that's yeah, very that's nice. Cool. You guys. But how I was you, working with a really great guitarist who used to play with Miles Davis named Garth Weber, and he recommended me for the audition. He didn't want to go on the road, and he said he sent me down to the audition. Oh wow! And I fought it out with some great guitar players. I had, I was, I had no idea they would choose me, but. I think that Melvin Seals, the band leader, he said I did a little jump on one of my solos. I kind of jumped. <laughs> He's like, I They're like, this guy. I like that. <laughs> so um, I could only get like one inch off the ground. Now I can get up to like two inches. So I'm catching nice. some major air nowadays. But I don't know, just around 2012, okay. they called me and said, do you want to go play Washington, D.C., Jerusalem, Tel Aviv, Rome, Catanzaro, Belgium, Paris, England, Scotland? We've 48 hours notice. Yeah. Wow. I was like, oh, that my. Cool. Yeah. He was learning them on the plane. <laughs> did you have your right? go bag oh, ready? Oh, yeah. I was going to say, how did, so you had to pick up the songs. Uh, well, you know, Kathy and, and the former guitarist Slick both brought me up on stage a couple of times. and uh, He had I, just come up on stage, like, the week before or something. He had just, yeah. and, and he had come up to sit in on a couple songs, and Slick kept saying, stay here, stay here. So he ended up on on the stage the whole show with us and he didn't know the songs yeah. and he still played them somehow <laughs> and uh, I mean he knew Guessed. them from, from <laughs> he's very quick well yeah. he's a fan too I mean he knew yeah. the songs from but ne oh, yeah. probably never sat down and tried to learn how to play them but he's that good he's one I of those I got your number that day Jude and I've called it every day since yeah right? he's been cracking <laughs> me up ever since <laughs> <laughs> so you got 48 hours notice oh and he nailed yeah. it and then you have a go the bag Beatles ready Fest was our first gig right hey Jude yeah in D.C., yeah. Abbey Road amazing. on the River, which is oh, a wow. wonderful day. We did some Beatles tunes and stuff. Yeah. Wow. And you did play Hey Jude, huh? We, we did. We didn't yeah. play oh, Hey Jude. Oh, you didn't play Hey Jude. Well, we with hey. That was too <laughs> obvious. <laughs> 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 we played really weird ones, like... Oh. Uh, dig I dig the a Walrus? Pony. I dig a Pony. Uh. Helter Skelter. <laughs> oh, cool. Uh, Charles Manson. It's pretty rocking. Well, we did yeah. let it yeah. be. Let I it. think we. I yeah. think we. We kind of did everything yeah. well, that that we could kind of them. make soulful in a way, uh -huh. and um, kind of took all the. Uh, all those kinds of songs and and um, sold Sexy. them up, and it was fun. Sexy Sadie. We didn't do Sexy Sadie. Yeah. 
we played for like 56 minutes until this gigantic thunder and lightning storm came in, and it was a great like fireworks show at the end of the night. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's really cool. They'd have the prints at the uh, Super Bowl. It right. actually enhanced the show, they said. <laughs> they thought it was kind of planned. To, yeah, uh, we typically out. get the eye of the storm, and the people that play after us don't really appreciate that. <laughs> you got it at Wood Rainbow. Woodstock, you got it at Woodstock. Yeah, yeah, quite often with this band. Paul was really good at that. I was going to say one thing that I learned uh, doing my homework. I mean, I always loved, all, you know, Jefferson Airplane. I'm an older guy. That's where he brought me along. <laughs> thought I could ask some of the older questions. and uh, But... You guys played on the roof of a, 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 a skyscraper in New York one year before the Beatles uh, played in London. Uh, you know, you played was in that six. Before? Yeah, well, yeah, it was well, a year, a uh, year and a few did. months Jefferson before. Jefferson Airplane yeah, did. I had, I wasn't in it yet. Yeah. But uh, what did they play? Marty got arrested. They played the House at Puniel Corners, they, yeah, which is one of the weirdest they, songs yeah. in the world. No wonder yeah, yeah. they got arrested. <laughs> And he, it's because of song choice. They get it was a very weird song. <laughs> and, he, and he said something similar to what Grace uh, uh, said at Woodstock. Uh, he said an explicit. He said, "Wake up, you effers, nerds!" Yeah. He said, "Free music, free love." And he said it was so great because the music was bouncing uh, like uh, in the caverns of all of those buildings. And he said thousands of people just started showing up all over the place. And when I was looking at the footage, it was similarly filmed to what the Beatles did. So it kind of blow my so mind because I'm a big yeah, Beatles, Beatles fan copied too, them, yeah. and, they, yeah. and they copied you. Guys. I know that's so. Yeah, my my, my question was: Are you play. guys? I mean, if you have any new music that you're working on, you we do. Really, you do. do you there know was a building. That's what I wanted to ask. I think you guys should do that. You know, fifty years for the summer of love. They just had that. You could have the uh, the rough thing. Uh, do and, and I think that's a great idea. Yeah, uh, is it? <laughs> and, and don't get a permit because Marty didn't get a permit. He said that was a big thing, so it was a real big well, surprise. Yeah, and you got to get arrested. Just well, like you the can't needles. get a yeah. permit Otherwise, because they wouldn't right. give it to you. So <laughs> yeah, right, just you do it. it. Yeah. Don't ask. <laughs> <laughs> do it. Ask for forgiveness, uh, not for permission. Least citation or it didn't happen. <laughs> right, right, right. Because <laughs> uh, you guys are rolling. I mean, fifty years as a band, going through all kinds of different incarnations. When I went online, I was really surprised. I mean, your music is great, but you two. YouTube is fairly new. You guys are a lot older than YouTube, but some of your videos have five, six million views. Nice. And I said, well, I wonder if these are all old people like me or they're... And I, I found wow. this really good uh, quote from this guy. He says, I was born in the 90s. And one thing I want to say about Jefferson Airplane and Starship, he said, I would give up all of the bands I ever saw at Coachella to have one night watching you guys wow. live. Oh, so yeah. what do you... We are free fans. Yeah. Are you doing anything to attract more young people and keep it rolling? People are very curious, you know. All, people that grew up with the band, people that have had children that have grown up, right. somewhat knowing about the band, especially with the Sarship era. Um, I think people come to the shows with a lot of curiosity and leave the show wanting to come back and see it. Yeah. Another one. Yeah. You know. Um, and, and it's just one of those things that we always look at each other and and, uh, and feel blessed to have each other as family, yeah. even with our own families at home. Yeah. Because it's really hard living together, and, and, and you know, bands somehow kind of grow apart when they get successful. Yeah. This band's been through so many different levels and mm. so many different faces. Right. I think what we have now is is. People that see us like the guy you were talking about, yeah. they they want more, and there's something special about the way the band is now. Right. And putting all three parts of the history of this band, with Airplane, Jefferson Starship, and even the Starship. Right. Um, we have this this kind of clump, if you will, <laughs> of people mm -hmm. from in their 20s to in their mid 70s mm -hmm. if not older yeah coming and just having a great time mm -hmm. there's something about our show that kind of takes it to a spot and it slowly escalates through the show mm -hmm. and by the end of the show we've got them not so much where we want them right but just where it's supposed to be yeah and uh, i think well put. people love that and uh, and they get to kind of relive that part of their life through song yeah. And, uh, I mean, we can't do anything and everything that's been a part of this band's history musically. Yeah. We'd love to. We'd be up there for days. Yeah, <laughs> yeah right. Uh -huh. But what we do is, is we try to pick and choose the certain songs that will that will be that relevant for those people to come. Yeah. And, and want to experience the band. Yeah. And, uh, 
But you are you are writing new stuff. You're exactly. writing new music. Oh yeah. yeah. We've actually just finished a five song EP. Okay. Really. Um, we do have a song that more so is finished than the other four. We're actually, hmm. you know, in, in the process of getting somebody to mix it and, mm -hmm. and all the fine tuning and putting the polish on it and, right. and getting it out so people can experience it. Is it a blend of everything you've done in the past, or is it something well, the new? new? Record, we we have stuff written with, with Grace Slick and mm -hmm. with Marty Ballin and Pete Sears is playing. Mm -hmm. it. So it's a blend it's of the the old oh, and, and, yeah. and the new. Yeah. yeah, it's all brand new material. But yeah, but you brought the old old band as well as the and they're gonna they're on the record as well or are they just uh, Pete is on the record. Uh, oh Grace wow! And Marty wrote material with us with you guys. Yeah. For them? yeah. Wow. Yeah. You're almost done yeah. with it. September 2019 is mm -hmm. the and it's called Mother of the Sun. S U N. It's very tribal. It's it's almost going back to being a little psychedelic and mm -hmm. uh, almost. Yeah, almost. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm not going to give it away. You just have to come and experience. Yeah. You right. know what's happening with the band, and, and that's why I say a lot of people. Mm. A lot of people are very curious, and, and uh, they, they seem to keep coming. Yeah. Uh, how do you how do you guys choose songs? Do you switch the songs up, or like how do you dig that through that many catalogs of records? Well, it's we, hard. You know, we have songs that we kind of stick to. And every once in a while, we'll throw in some other things. It, it really depends on the show, where we are, how long we've been out. Yeah. Um, do you, how much time? Do you guys kind of, like, Kathy, do you have a handful of songs that you like and want to play? And then David? Yeah, we, I mean, there, there it's are, kind of a blend. are definitely a lot of songs that we play every single night because those are the songs people want and need to hear. Sure. Like the biggest hits. Um, and then, but then we also try, you know, to give them a little bit of color of of the deep cuts, maybe some more obscure things. Like we open the show generally with this piece, Sunrise, which is from uh, the very first Jefferson Starship album, which was actually Paul Kantner's solo record, mm -hmm. um, Blows Against the Empire. So we start there. And we just we go through the years, and there are so many so many radio hits that everybody knew. Yeah. Um, and then we play a little Quicksilver. We play our new th thing. Um, and then there's like other periphery songs that we might we might put in a different show. Sketches of China, Stairway to Cleveland. Sometimes I'll call an audible and. <laughs> and just you know, like David, no, David's days. guitar yeah. broke or the drums broke or something. So we just start playing a song, and and we, you know, we've all been doing this for so long. And in the Paul Kentner years, we used to play a lot of obscure stuff. So we know all this stuff forwards and backwards. You know, we could really, we've done album shows where we play an entire yeah. Red Octopus, Dragonfly. Um, surrealistic pillow so there's just there's a tremendous amount to draw from yeah we always give people what they want and then give them what they don't know that they need <laughs> i love that i like that <laughs> that's amazing. yeah that's really cool i had one quick question when you're playing the same venue like the belly up a couple maybe a couple nights in a row do you change it so that that's people want to come back one to know when yeah. we left the stage last night i'm like are these people going to come again or is it going to be a new think, room I so uh, you know sometimes uh, we switch yeah. it up a little yeah, yeah. i yeah. think i mean we, we kind of stick to what we do but yeah I okay something else in there maybe start to show a little different there's going to be a couple other songs in there but you know like Kath said we, we stick to the songs that we really believe that they want to hear yeah uh, even down to Jefferson Starship yeah at the end and yeah. going into the early Starship right so it's are they pretty tight sets or I was listening to some of the early interviews David with uh, Marty and, and and some of the different early members saying and Grace even said that when um, when you guys were playing your best it was when each person was kind of doing their own thing and coming together in a crescendo uh, do you is it really is it a lot more tight now or do you I don't know. I the maybe the structure is a little more firm but we definitely let each other have our, our space within that so there's still okay. a little bit of j like jamming off of uh, yeah. that oh, yeah. Yeah. Well, that's yeah. kind of, part a, of the whole thing that's yeah part of what this band is is never yeah. losing that you know? yeah well i mean you got, no, stuff, no backup tracks yeah yeah right there's yeah. there's get out on this hooked one up song. to a machine 
So yep. what are you waiting for? Uh -huh. What are we waiting for? I'm not waiting. <laughs> <laughs> You're not a woman in waiting? <laughs> the ending is longer than the song itself. Wow. Oh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> that might be actually true. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Sometimes it is. Yeah. No, it's, it's all good. David, do you, did you ever see yourself playing music? He's this. Right uh, now. <laughs> wow. I mean, He's you're young. <laughs> that was uh, that, this. When was that? That was 1982, I think. <clears throat> that, yeah. The one that's back there. <laughs> Did you think you'd be doing this for this long when you started? When you picked up the guitar in I San Francisco? I didn't think I'd live past 40. Are you kidding me? <laughs> oh. and now I'm twice that. So. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> so I don't know. We went through. This, this band's been through a lot of changes. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Really. And you've, you've and, been rolling uh, through the changes. Yeah, I mean, like Jefferson Jefferson Starships kind of stopped in 1985 mm -hmm. until Paul started it up again after Starship had right. ceased to ceased to exist, mm -hmm. and and so then then it went on from like 1991 something like that. Mm -hmm. do, you, do you think it's kept you young? I was thinking about Ponce de Leon when I was looking. He's, he's, he's 80 young. years old. <laughs> I said Ponce, you know, travel and went to Florida and you know was trying to find that fountain, fountain of, youth, of youth. But yeah. I think you found it in, 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 in this band. I didn't you? honestly don't know. What, I've just it's, it's, we, I think how do you yeah. do it, David? How do you stay alive? <laughs> Breakfast of Champions. Oh, Gold State Warriors, yeah, man. man. Gold yeah. State Warriors and a treadmill. Oh, yeah. 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 There you oh, go. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I, figure, I figure I have to walk on the treadmill or they might not win. Yeah. So. Yeah. I see you have your Fitbit. You can't get your our, steps oh, yeah, in. I got my yeah. Fitbit. At our Airbnb <laughs> yesterday, he was on like an air treadmill. He was just <laughs> marching in place as we were watching that yeah, If the Warriors lose, it means David's on a plane or something. Oh, <laughs> oh no. So we know who to blame. That's if not they really lose. true. Last <laughs> night. His feet were still too. <laughs> Don't stop moving. <laughs> well, thank you guys again so much for doing oh, this. Uh, I had one more question. Oh, yeah, go ahead. Uh, for new bands, like uh, there's a band called the Eiffels that <laughs> my son heads up, and uh, he was on tour over for the U.S. And in fact, Universal uh, Music uh, had a big contest nationwide. His band, the Eiffels, came in second place. Oh. But it's so hard to to break through the music. I mean, he comes in second place in, throughout the United States, and he's still. I mean, he's got about 50, 60 songs that are ready to you know make it. He's been on the radio, but uh, what advice do you have to, in well, today's you can't world? Even to get me? a pot bus nowadays. I don't know how you make it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's so, so no advice. Uh, anyone have Next any? thing you know, they'll legalize playing music on tops of buildings. <laughs> yeah. I, I thought, well, yeah. I can't get arrested. That's why I thought about you guys yeah. giving you that idea to, to do it. You so know, it's a good know. idea to be at the right place at the right time. Yeah. So he's going to find that. Huh? Well, that's, that's a, a, makes a case for just do it. Just yeah. do it. You do know it. what I mean? You, never know. you can be a rock yeah. star in your hometown and you can have, you know, I used to, in, in Chicago, Chicago in the 90s, we had people around the block. We were playing the big venues. We were on the radio station. We never made it big nationally, but yeah. boy, we were rock stars in our hometown. And you right. can do that. You can make a following, especially now with the internet. Just put yourself out there. I mean, yeah. it, my... Uh, my dad used to say, music's hard, you should have a trade to fall back on. And then a very wise producer said, if you have something to fall back on, you will. Yeah. So yeah. Oh. music is a don't trade, fall. and it's a trade you can actually make a living from. So don't let anybody tell you you can't. Right. Just do it. Yeah. It's all no, about I, I the like journey. It. That's Ask why the journey. Vikings used to Ask burn their ships when they <laughs> landed. Yeah. On, I mean, with no. the internet now, unlike <laughs> yeah, when we were growing up, I mean, yeah. it was totally different. I mean, there's a lot of competition out there, but having the internet... It kind of gets you through and gets you closer to whoever yeah. wants to watch. Yeah. Instead of you know beating your ass mm -hmm. out there trying to do it, you can do all that other stuff by yeah. just sitting in a chair in front of a screen, right? Playing your music. You yeah. Know, write what you feel. Try to stay true to yourself. Do it. Yeah. Do it. And enjoy <laughs> it. We all feel the same way. Have fun. Yeah. Yeah. If you're not having night. fun, it won't work. Yeah. And there's a lot of people out there not doing that. That's why people are so uptight. Right. They're doing it to get by. Yeah. We're doing it because we yeah. love it. Yeah. yeah. We're blessed. Yeah. Um, but it's we not are. easy. Right. But if you can, you know, stay, even tell your kids, you know, I mean, you do have choices. Yeah. But you got to work on it. It right. just doesn't happen. Yeah. I mean, music's our mistress, so to speak. And, and uh, 
you know, again, we're blessed to, to have it in our lives and, and have great families and, yeah. and support and people behind us still coming out and wanting to see yeah. us. Well, th thank you guys so much for doing this. Like, thank we, you. Thank you. Yeah, yeah you guys are thank great. You, yeah, thank, thank you. Yeah, thank you. I really Can enjoyed we do a this. five part yeah. harmony before you yeah. take it off? Oh, yeah. Of Are course. <laughs> Start it off, Chris. Ah. 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 See, that's why they come. I love it. <laughs> Gee, that was only four part. The fifth part would have made it great, though. <laughs> I was just okay, well, you guys are fired. One chord. Two, three, and. Oh. Oh.